you want to get the most out of your days and you don't want to waste time trying things that just don't work. Here are my daily habits for productivity to make sure that when the wheels are spinning, you are moving forward. These are things that I actually do, so you won't find anything here about going to the gym every day or doing yoga at sunrise. But let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help busy people get organized, get motivated and get shit done. And let's just jump right in, seeing as we're talking about not wasting time. Productive mornings begin the night before. I have mine and my daughter's outfits picked out, I have her lunch made and her bags packed, and I have my to-do list already written. If mornings are a struggle for you and you find that you're always hitting that snooze button and feeling rushed and like you don't have time to wake up properly before you are dashing out of the door, then try to have as many things planned and prepped and ready to go in advance as possible. This will allow you to hit the ground running with no time for second guessing or spending ages trying to decide what to wear and what to eat and what task you should focus on first and you know searching for your keys and where is your child's other shoe? It has made such a huge difference to my life to have mine and my daughter's outfits picked out in advance. I pick an entire week's worth on Sunday so that each morning I can just grab what I need and get dressed. Same with my daughter, she just picks out whatever is already hanging up for her and she doesn't have to pull her whole closet apart. And because I know what tasks I'm supposed to be tackling first, I can just jump straight in. Which leads me to my next tip that is going to get your day started on the right foot and that is that when you sit down to work, eat a frog. In other words, tackle your hardest task first. Now, you don't necessarily have to complete it that morning. Usually the hardest tasks are the ones that take the longest, but making strides on it every morning will soon see it ticked off your list once and for all. Doing it first thing in the morning gets it out of the way and it is such a great feeling of accomplishment. It will help build a lot of momentum that is going to carry you through the rest of your day because when you smash a hard task first thing in the morning, it's just smooth sailing from there on out. The reason you tackle it first is not only to set yourself up for the day with a sense of achievement, but also because that is usually when your energy is at its highest. As the day wears on, you wear down. You get tired, you start wanting to take shortcuts, you put things off, unexpected things will crop up, you will be abducted by the Instagram aliens and lose two hours of your life. For me, there is another reason, and that is that first thing in the morning, it takes a while before my mental faculties are fully alert. By having my to-do list already written with my frog first, I can just dive straight into it before my brain even has a chance to protest. I'm just getting it done. I don't have any time to you know, give myself excuses for why I should put it off. It is a sneak attack on my sleepy head. I also find that in the morning, I'm not bogged down by other things. You know, I'm not worrying about that phone call I just got, hate talking on the phone, or how close it's getting to that deadline. I haven't been bombarded with hours and hours of other people's opinions and ideas. Instead, I am a clean slate. I have a fresh perspective. So I get the hard stuff done in the morning before reality really sets in. Your morning is what sets up your day. It sets the tone. If you start strong, you're doing well, but if you start off on the wrong foot, you will waste the rest of the day scrambling to get back on track, and that is a huge waste of time. You want to set yourself up for success, not setbacks. Try to get up a little earlier. I know, I know, as a night owl, I hear ya. But last year, I made it my mission to get up at 6.30. That was about an hour before my daughter gets up in the morning. And it meant that I had all that time to eat my frog in peace. 
I had uninterrupted time to be productive and to get those hard tasks done before I had some other person making demands of my time and attention. It was quiet and glorious. And then I could give my daughter my full attention before she finally found her other shoe and went to school. Now, if you are the parent of a small child or a sick child, or you are in some other way sacrificing a decent night's sleep, this does not apply to you. You get a free pass on this one. Because if there is one thing that is more important than getting up early, it's actually getting some sleep in the first place. So you are entirely off the hook. Come back when the kids are grown. But if you can set your alarm for just a little bit earlier to allow yourself that time to wake up, get up, get dressed, get breakfast and get stuff done. If this lifelong hardened night owl can do it, so can you. Speaking of breakfast, my final morning tip before we move on to the rest of your day is to eat one. It doesn't necessarily have to be first thing because if you are anything like me, then consuming anything first thing in the morning just makes you feel nauseous. But as soon as you feel up to it, eat something wholesome. You have essentially been fasting all through the night, so you are going to be really low on fuel. Try not to survive just on like small snacks and nibbles here and there throughout the day because what that does is it sends a scarcity mentality to your brain. It tells your body that there isn't much on offer so it is going to need to conserve as much energy as possible. You know, it's just going to drip feed it to you so you're not going to be firing on all cylinders. Eat as well and as much as you healthily can. Your body will then release regular energy reserves throughout the morning to keep you going for longer. And be sure that you are hydrating too. Keep a bottle of water beside you and then anytime you find that you are distracted or when you're taking a break, drink. Which brings us right up until about lunchtime. One of the most productive things that you can do when you are working is to step away. It is common sense that if you are doing the same task over and over all day long, it is going to become boring and tedious. Your brain is just going to switch off. You are going to disengage from the process. Like I did when I had to sing Let It Go 5,000 times when my daughter was younger. Good times. <laughs> Yet a lot of us plug away at the same project for hours and hours because we think that taking a break means we have less time to work on it. But working on something for longer doesn't mean making it better. Your brain needs a break so that it can reset itself. Sometimes you are so close to something, you are so involved in it, that you can't see the forest for the trees, you know, you can't come up with any new ideas. Stepping away for a decent amount of time means that you can come back to it with a clear head and a fresh perspective. One of the best ways that I have found to keep my energy levels and my focus high is through alternating tasks. Switching from a mental task to a physical task and back again. That means that one part of me can be resting and recharging while the other part is working. So try to structure your days so that you are alternating the tasks that require a lot of brain power with the tasks that require a lot of woman power. Don't know why I just said that, weak as a kitten. <laughs> but you will find that you will be able to get so much more done. An added bonus, and it is my next tip, is that it gets you moving on a regular basis. By switching from a mental task to a physical one, you are forcing yourself to get up and move around a bit. This gets the blood pumping, it wakes you up a little bit, it wipes some of the cobwebs away, it improves your posture a little bit, etc. Bonus points if you can get outside for some fresh air too. Don't let gravity just drag you closer to the ground. Get up, you know, stretch out and stand tall. 
One of the best ways that I have found to do this, and it is my next productivity tip, is to use timers. Because my work is primarily mental, <laughs> in both senses of the word, I try and alternate my days so that I am doing 45 minutes of focused work and then 15 minutes of physical work. So that is usually chores, but sometimes it's things like setting up cameras and lights. Timers are probably the number one productivity tool that I recommend. When you don't want to do something, they force you to get started. When you want to get something just over and done with, they give you a deadline. And when you want to knuckle down and really focus on something, they make it much easier to avoid distractions because you know that you have a break coming up. If you only take one thing away from this video, use timers to get stuff done and to help you switch between tasks. Now, there is something else that is going to help transform your days and that is to reset your space. That means that whenever you are finished up a task or whatever you're doing, you put the space back the way it was so that the next time you step into it, it's ready to go. When you are finished at work, tidy off your desk so that the next time you sit down to work, you can just dive straight into your tasks. You won't have to like move papers and crap out of the way first. When you are finished preparing food, clear off the counters and wash up so that the next time you go to prepare a meal, you don't first have to clean up all the dirty dishes and wipe down greasy surfaces. I don't know about you, but I can never seem to find a clean knife when I need one. But you get the idea. A task is never really fully completed until you have tidied up after yourself. Once you get in the habit of putting things back, it will just become automatic. And trust me, it is so much easier to just tidy as you go rather than facing a huge mess the next time you want to do something. And be sure that you are including some self-care in there. Now, I'm not saying you have to take yourself off to the spa every day, although props to you if you do, but choose something that you enjoy and then schedule some time for it every day, even if it's just a few minutes. I read every evening before sleep and it gives me that buffer time between work and bed because if I just went straight from work to bed, I wouldn't sleep at all. My brain would still be racing. If you are really ready to take things up a notch and to get the most out of life, then click here to watch this video. Until then, gorev mile magwev. Agas vekimishiv shikalua. Sloan.